It's common that a wrestler will most likely take time off due to an injury. While most wrestlers return looking about the same as they did before their injury, some wrestlers return to the ring looking enhanced is probably the most delicate way we can put it. Time to pump some iron and take some supplements as we take a look at some WWE wrestlers who returned suspiciously shredded. Let's kick off this list with the rated R superstar Edge. Edge has never been known to have the most shredded or jacked physique of anyone on the WWE roster. Yes, he wasn't a string bean or overweight, but when you think of your typical offenders when it comes to steroid users, Edge doesn't usually tick off the usual boxes. However, when Edge returned from a neck surgery in 2003, he also came back in a noticeably shredded shape compared to before he left. The surgery in question was a neck fusion surgery which is a very intense surgery that many other WWE wrestlers have received over the years, including Kurt Angle, John Cena, Braun Strowman, and Randy Orton. This means that two of the vertebrae in the neck actually have to be fused together at the disc. Edge stated in an interview in 2004 that he did take steroids. In this case, he was told that the steroids would help with his healing process to help strengthen the muscles in his neck. He stayed on them as an experiment, but at least, according to him, decided against continuing to use them as he felt they slowed him down in the ring. However, according to a 2007 article in Sports Illustrated, he was named as one of 10 wrestlers named for purchasing steroids through an online pharmacy. According to the report, the rated R superstar had been purchasing steroids and growth hormones from September 2004, about six months after the interview where he stated he stopped doing steroids to February 2007. Whether he continued to use the juice after this is not well known as over the years he's contributed his build to a number of different workouts and diets. Another person on this list who's been forthcoming about his steroid use has been none other than Tough Enough Season 1 winner Maven. Since launching his YouTube channel last year, the original Tough Enough winner has been very candid about a number of subjects when it comes to his career. He's talked about his paydays, relationships with other performers, and even about his drug use and life after the WWE. One video in particular that generated buzz was on the topic of steroid usage. In the video, Maven admitted that at the time, officials pushed him to do something about his physique when he walked in the door. In the video, he mentioned how an unnamed official talked to him about talking to the other guys about going on the creatine to bulk up. Once he asked around, a number of performers pointed him in the direction of a doctor who then prescribed him steroids. In an interview with Chris Van Vliet, he mentioned that after breaking his leg in 2002, his doctor told him to stay off of everything he was using, meaning when he first came back from injury, he was actually slightly out of shape. According to him, once the locker room started cracking jokes about his physique, he went home and pounded steroids to get back into shape. In the video he posted to his channel, Maven showed a side-by-side -side comparison of his first ever promo shot from right after he won Tough Enough to his second promo shot from 18 months later, which was not too long after he came back from injury and started using steroids again, and the results are pretty clear. As Maven mentions in the video, obviously I'm not getting those results without using performance enhancers. Another performer with a noticeable change in physique after a return is none other than the late, great Eddie Guerrero. Latino Heat spent much of his early career being defined by how small he was compared to other performers. While he did win the WCW United States Championship at one point, Eddie was a fixture of WCW's cruiserweight division before asking for his release and jumping ship to the WWE in 2000. While the division offered a lot of exciting action, the fact that the performers in the division received the cruiserweight label seemed to create a glass ceiling for anyone who wanted to work their way higher up the card. Eddie made his debut for the WWE in 2000 and made an impact. Unfortunately, some of his other demons caught up with him, and he was arrested on a drunk driving charge in 2001 that led to the WWE firing him. 
Eddie spent the next year working the independent circuit, including working a little-known wrestling promotion called Ring of Honor, and later working a triple threat match with Rey Mysterio and some guy by the name of CM Punk for the IWA, Mid-South promotion in early 2002 before getting rehired by the WWE. Upon his return in 2002, Eddie looked bigger than ever and became bigger in size from the point of this return to his untimely passing in 2005. It was later determined that Guerrero's passing was caused by heart failure due to an underlying heart issue that Guerrero had. While Guerrero's history of drugs and alcohol certainly played a part in his untimely passing, it's widely accepted that Guerrero also abused steroids, not only due to the nature of his size, but also because he was named in the same 2007 Sports Illustrated article that Edge was as someone who had purchased steroids through an online pharmacy. It's a shame what the world was robbed of due to substance abuse. Speaking of Eddie Guerrero, Let's talk about the man he beat for the WWE Championship. We're talking about the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. Just on athletic prowess alone, Brock Lesnar is a total freak of nature. His accolades are a mile long on their own, with not only 10 WWE World Championships under his belt, but he's also a one-time UFC heavyweight champion and one-time IWGP heavyweight champion. And in college, he racked up a number of wrestling championships, including being a two-time NCAA wrestling champion. All that being said, Brock Lesnar, as long as he's been in a WWE ring, has always looked like he was built like the Incredible Hulk. Brock seemed to slim down considerably after he left WWE and went into the UFC, but seemed to bulk back up when he returned to the WWE in 2012. The legitimacy of how he got such a physique had been called into question by fans numerous times over the years, but wouldn't seem to be confirmed until 2016. Lesnar had just had his UFC fight with Mark Hunt, where he won. While Lesnar had been away from UFC for a while, he saw this as a great one-off opportunity for him. Unfortunately for Brock, his victory in this fight was overturned less than a week later when USADA tested Brock and found that he had a banned substance in his system at the time of the fight. After taking a second test to confirm, Brock Lesnar was fined $250,000 and suspended for a year. At the time, WWE's official stance was that he was not employed by WWE, his last date with them being at WrestleMania that year, and was not scheduled to return to the promotion for another month, seemingly to wash their hands of it. Backstage rumors from the time suggested that WWE didn't think it was necessary to hold a part-time performer to the same wellness policy that full-time performers are expected to adhere to. The same wellness policy that suspended Roman Reigns that same year for using Adderall. Another case of a performer making a return being beyond jacked is Test. Test was a staple of the Attitude Era as a member of the corporation and a memorable angle where he had an on-screen relationship with Stephanie McMahon before Triple H swooped in and stole her away. Test toiled away in the WWE mid-card until 2004 when he was released from his contract. Two years later, Test made his way back to the WWE. He'd make his debut on the reboot of ECW and seemed to be more shredded than ever. Test left WWE again in 2007 and posted a rant on his MySpace page, where he not only denied using steroids, but claimed that in wrestling, he believed it didn't matter, because since the finishes are predetermined, it didn't actually affect anything. Test unfortunately passed away in 2009 due to an overdose of oxycodone. Reports claim that he had gone to rehab about a year earlier, with WWE even helping with the expenses. Further examination also revealed that he suffered from CTE. Authorities found a lot of different paraphernalia at his home, including painkillers and prescription pills. Among the things he was found to be in possession of, steroids were found, which make one think that he was not telling the truth in that message he posted during his 2007 departure. The next performer we're going to talk about is the modern-day Maharaja himself, Jinder Mahal. The career path of Jinder Mahal has been an interesting one. Debuting on WWE's main roster in 2011, 
He started off promising with a heel character, but eventually fell down the card. And within a year, he was back to working in NXT. In 2012, he got called back up and appeared as part of the comedy trio of three-man band consisting of Mahal, Heath Slater, and Drew McIntyre. All three performers were put together in a comedy group, simply because WWE didn't know what to do with them. Even when they were getting the gimmick over, WWE never got behind their push. In June 2014, Mahal was released from his contract. After working the independent circuit for a couple of years, he'd end up back in the WWE. Once he returned to TV, fans noticed how much bigger Mahal had grown, to a point where many fans speculated that he was using steroids to achieve this look. Even some professionals called out his new physique with natural bodybuilder and YouTuber Nick Miller, saying that he should be tested for steroids and former WWE wrestler Ryback, saying on his podcast, I'm pointing out the obvious. That doesn't just happen from drinking a protein shake. Jinder hit back at the accusations by posting a photo of himself on his Instagram page with the caption, Hash TBT to a few weeks ago. No idea exactly when or where. Anyone else on the roster have veins in their abs? And of course I'll get a hundred steroid or wellness comments. I've been tested multiple times since coming back and have never once in over six years with WWE had any issues. Follow my IG stories or my Snapchat and you can see that no one is out training me and no one is out dieting me. That all being said, to Jinder's credit, he's never failed a wellness policy test, so it's certainly possible that he never was actually on the juice. But when you have professionals looking at you, and even they think you're using something, it's hard not to think that there's something going on. Speaking of the three-man band, another alumni from that group who went through a similar change is none other than Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre made his debut for WWE in 2006. During this run, he'd have Vince McMahon come out on television and declare McIntyre the chosen one and call him a future world champion. Fast forward a few years later, and after Drew was dealt with some heavy hitters in his personal life, he started to fall down the card. McIntyre joined Jinder Mahal and Heath Slater in three-man band in 2012 and stayed there until his release in 2014, the same time as Mahal. McIntyre, now going by Drew Galloway, seemed to reinvent himself on the independent circuit for the next three years, showing the world what he was capable of and even winning the TNA World Heavyweight Championship in the process. McIntyre re-signed with the WWE in 2017, first making his way through NXT before returning to the main roster in 2018. During this return to the WWE, a lot of people noticed that McIntyre was sporting a much bigger build. If you go back to his first run from 2006 to 2014, while he was never rail thin, he always had a more slender build to him. After returning to WWE in 2017, he seemed bulkier, more muscular, and completely shredded in comparison. McIntyre has said in multiple interviews that this has been due to changing his diet and workout routine. He's also another superstar who has yet to fail a drug test or receive a wellness policy violation. McIntyre has also had some fun over his change in physique recently. In 2023, on 10, he posted a side-by-side -side comparison of a promo picture from his first run to a recent promo picture, making the joke, Left, I'll have your daughter home by 10, sir. Right, she calls me daddy now. McIntyre also credits Jinder Mahal with helping him with his physique, as Mahal also changed his diet and workout routine to get the physique that, as we previously pointed out, was also called into question over whether or not he was using steroids. Well, here we are, the biggest entry on this list, The Big Show. Over the course of his career, The Big Show dealt with a lot of different fluctuations in weight. He even had stints of being sent to developmental as punishment for putting on too much weight. The Big Show seemed to turn this around and then some in 2017 when he showed up on TV with not just some weight loss, but probably the best physique of his life. The giant with abs was the term thrown around at the time, not only by fans, but by Big Show on his Instagram profile. This was a shocking transformation to say the least, especially since Big Show spent the last 20 years being more impressive with his height than with his body. 
While many were quick to say that he was on the juice, Big Show credited the transformation to his personal trainer for helping him shed an incredible 70 pounds and rocking abs like he never had before. Big Show also said what spurred on the drive to lose weight was two different things. First, he was in the locker room one day, and John Cena cracked a joke saying, no one wants to see a giant with abs. This made Big Show realize that he truly needed to put in the work and shed some weight. The other motivation he had for the weight loss was that for years, WWE had been trying to book a match between the Big Show and Shaq. While that match never materialized beyond a few teases, Big Show wanted to get himself into the best shape of his life to make that match as good as he could possibly make it. Now, here's the real twist on this entry. While his 2017 transformation was jaw-dropping, there's been no evidence of him using steroids to achieve this look, again with him crediting the transformation to his personal trainer. In 2023, a report came out that he was named in a federal case where a company by the name of Biogenesis of America was investigated, and a whole slew of names came out of performers who used performance-enhancing drugs. While there were many people on the list from all sorts of backgrounds, Big Show was named as the most notable pro wrestler in the scandal. According to Biogenesis founder Tony Bosch, Big Show came to him during 2009 and 2010 for steroids. Big Show's attorney denied the allegation, and in terms of any hard evidence, besides Bosch's testimony, is that Big Show was in one of his thinner passages with his weight at this time. But even if he was on steroids at the time, his physique wouldn't be anything super noticeable compared to what he was able to do in 2017. Another target of ridicule when it comes to suspiciously shredded physiques is the cerebral assassin Triple H. At his peak, it became more than obvious when Triple H was using steroids to enhance his physique. He notably became very flabby looking during 2004 and cycled from looking jacked to shrinking in size throughout his career. The most obvious case of this was in 2002, when Triple H returned from injury and seemed to be in the best shape of his life. This is the only instance where Triple H has admitted to ever using steroids. Any other time the subject has come up, he has denied it or changed the subject. While he has denied it over the years, other former superstars have claimed that he used them frequently. One of the most famous instances was when Scott Steiner was looking to sign to the WWE after WCW went out of business. According to Steiner, WWE asked him to take a drug test, and his response was to tell them that he'd take a drug test if Triple H took one. While Triple H has never been known to fail a drug test, he's also been accused of nepotism since he's married to Vince's daughter. Rumors have gone on for years that he received preferential treatment because of his ties to the McMahon family and would likely have a failed drug test swept under the rug if that were even the case. Triple H has shown signs of steroid use over the years, including a heavily fluctuating physique and the fact that Triple H has a sloped forehead like he does. As a friend of ours once put it to us, his forehead looks like a pack of hot dogs Triple H nutritionist was hit with some criticism in 2017 when he stated that even though the game wasn't using steroids at the time, he'd love to use them if it weren't for the wellness policy. It's comments like this that really make you wonder where the truth lies. To wrap up this list, let's go one-on-one -on -one with the great one. The Rock's popularity at this point goes far beyond the squared circle. He is the highest paid actor in all of Hollywood, has launched a production company called Seven Bucks Productions, which has a number of successful movies and TV shows under its belt. Plus, he was just appointed to the TKO Group Board of Directors, meaning he's now one of the most powerful men in the WWE. The Rock has always been in great shape, even back in his days as Rocky Mavia. The Rock started to slim down at the beginning of his acting career, thinking it would be easier for him to land roles and break out in Hollywood but found that having a larger physique was something unique that he brought to the table. Anyone who's seen The Rock in a wrestling ring since his comeback in 2011 can tell you that he's been bigger than he ever was during the Attitude Era. The Rock, like many on this list, attributes his shredded build to a combination of exercise and a diet of 6,000 to 8,000 calories a day 
across five to seven meals, depending on the role he's training for. While this is all incredible info, there's critics who don't buy it. One very vocal critic has been none other than Joe Rogan. Rogan stated on his podcast in 2022, there's no way you can look like that in your 40s. The rock should come clean right now. He should make a video in response to the Liver King video. I need to talk to you because The Rock's been lying. There's not a f***ing chance in hell he's clean. Not a chance in hell. As big as The Rock is at 50, he's so massive and he's so different than he was when he was 30. There's a responsibility you have to people who are listening to you. If you don't want to talk about it, that's one thing. But if you do talk about it, there's a responsibility you have to people listening to you. And I think you have to be honest about it, which is why I'm honest about it. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking hormone replacement. The Rock, to his credit, has admitted to using steroids before. However, he stated that he tried them when he was about 18 or 19, but hasn't touched them since. With a body like his, we think that questioning the methods of getting to that size at his age is a healthy concern. Did we miss any suspiciously shredded returns? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. And before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Ring Rivals so you don't miss the next ones.